Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk about two cool things together. Let's stick them together. Let's talk about marketing and let's talk about Star Wars. And what I'd like to specifically talk about today is what I call the long tail of Star Wars fandom, uh, which is a way of looking at the distribution of sales within the Star Wars franchise and how the value of the Star Wars franchise is created relative to the fans. I'm going to start by explaining what a long tail is. If you don't attend a lot of marketing conferences or you don't read a lot of stuff on marketing, you may not be certain what the long tail really means. In a marketing concept, it has to do with the way that sales are distributed, but you could look at long tails um, with any kind of distribution model. So the first distribution model you might have seen uh, that is relevant to this discussion is like a bell curve. So when people are talking about the tails of something, what they really mean are these parts over here. Um, so if this was a, a distribution of IQ, right, um, most IQs in the middle, like most of the entire population, you know, 75% of the populations clustered right in the middle, then you have a few people who are really low IQ and very few people that are really high IQ. And as this curve kind of extends, extends out, you get fewer and fewer people that are more and more extreme. Um, so if you hear somebody talk about long tail events, these are events that are, are far out to either side of, of a distribution like a bell curve. They're very unexpected events or they're very, very rare events. Um, however, in marketing, we're not usually looking at a bell curve where we have um, a focus of distribution in the middle. Uh, what you tend to be looking at with marketing is, um, is something more like this, a, a, a hyperbola, right? And so a hyperbola, you have... Um, you have focus up here and you have focus um, down over here. And where you divide it in half is usually kind of over kind of in this area. Um, and so the distribution when we're talking about long tail in marketing has to do with selling a few items, uh, but a large quantity of them up here. Um, so this would be like the, the number of items and these um, and this over here would be, you know, the sales. Um, so if you're selling a lot of toilet paper, this is what we call a spike item. Uh, it's on the it's on the spike, or uh, this is sometimes called the slope, and this is called the tail over here. So a spike item is like toilet paper, and a tail item would be like a really specific auto part. And so this distribution curve is really important in lots of businesses. Um, if you think of an auto parts business, uh, these spike items this is going to be like motor oil, oil filters, windshield windshield wiper fluid. This is stuff that you sell a lot of the same item over and over again. And then you have curve stuff, which is going to be, you know, more like uh, oil filters, um, wiper blades, things like that. And then over here on the tail, you have, you know, solenoids for some particular part on some particular car, a carrier harness, um, alternators, you know, those sorts of things. So uh, things that are really, really specific. Um, you don't sell a lot of alternators for 89 Fords, but... Um, you have to be able to stock those to sell them to lots of different people. So the value of the tail uh, determines a lot of the business. So with an auto parts business, being able to special order parts and sell them to people might be a really, really part of the, the business that's valuable. And how you divide that distribution up into half, like half of it might come from the spike, half of it comes from this long tail. It depends on the business. Um, this There's a book that's out called The Long Tail by Chris Anderson, who was a... a an editor at Wired Magazine. I don't know if he still is, uh, but the idea of the long tail is that in online businesses, you can really serve this ever extending longer tail of people who want a larger diversity of objects, um, but don't buy a, a, a ton of them, right? So you might have, Amazon has a has a fatter long tail. So their, their curve might look more like this um, rather than um, rather than something uh, really broad. So they might have a really uh, sort of long curve um, and the tail might go out further. Um, and so what you might have here at the, at the top is something like Twilight. And um, Twilight, it sells a lot of copies. Um, it's the same book sold to millions of people. And then somewhere further down the slope, you might have like Anne Rice, um, Vampire Chronicles. And then as you keep going down further down the tail, you get really, really specific um, niche versions or niche versions of um, Twilight. So you might have um, erotic postmenopausal vampire romance is going to be somewhere out there. And there, you're not going to sell a lot of copies, but the product exists to people who really want to buy that one product. So the value of looking at the long tail in most kinds of uh, business distribution is looking at selling a large diversity of products versus selling a smaller diversity of products um, at a larger capacity and how you want to divide that. 
And with online businesses, because of the way they work, you can have a lot more value in the long tail than if you have, um, say, a, a physical location like Walmart, where you can't stock something that's really like a, a really a small niche kind of uh, product because you won't have enough people come in and buy it to, for you to afford to stock it on the shelf when you could stock something else that's further on the spike. So um, that's the basic idea of the long tail. Now, what it has to do with uh, Star Wars is something um, a little bit different. So rather than looking at Star Wars as, um, say, sales and this sort of thing, um, what we get with Star Wars is a distribution of fans um, and how much money the fans actually spend so if I you know if I just pick a I'm gonna pick a cool color here and I'm gonna redraw that um, that parabola like this you know if you have this I'm sorry a hyperbola like this so if you have this distribution curve represents the distribution of Star Wars fans um, and the y-axis would be the number of fans. So this is the number of fans over here, right? Number of fans. And the x-axis actually would represent the amount of money each fan spends. So most people are kind of up here in this spike, and this is where the movies are, okay? The movies are up here in this spike. So lots of people will go buy one ticket to a Star Wars movie. So there's a lot of fans that will buy one ticket for a low, you know, a low amount of money, like 10 bucks. So you're going to sell a lot of $10 tickets. Then as you move through the slope, you have fans that spend more money each year on Star Wars. And that's a really good way to think about it. So there's people who spend, you know, about $100 a year on Star Wars. And that's going to be a lot of your typical mid-level fans kind of on the slope. They buy the movie on DVD or Blu-ray. They watch it in the theater. Maybe they watch it twice in the theater. They might buy a few toys for their kids or because they like them, um, maybe some Lego sets or something, and it, or maybe a video game. It adds up to like one to $200, and it's really easy to get over $100 in the Star Wars franchise without doing that much. Then as you go further down the slope, you're going to get fans who spend you know $500 a year on Star Wars. They see the movie multiple times, they buy the video games, they buy toys, they buy shirts, they buy clothing and that sort of stuff. But this long tail way over here um, these are the fans that I think actually make Star Wars the valuable brand that it is. These are the people who spend a thousand dollars a year on Star Wars. And the relationship of those fans with the franchise is very important because if you lose one fan that spends a thousand dollars a year on your product, over here at the movie tickets, you better be losing that fan in order to get uh, 10 to 100 extra people going to see your movie for the loss of that one Fan. It can be a very, very significant thing. So the value of the long tail, even though there's not that many people over here who spend $1,000 a year on, on Star Wars, um, they have a big impact on the total value of the franchise. And if you think that that seems like a bit extreme, it's really not. I've known people who spend um, at least $1,000 a year on Star Wars or stuff that's related to Star Wars. Uh, I know people who have like $100,000 Star Wars collections, including like $5,000 Stormtrooper or like Darth Vader costumes, things like that. Um, these are, these are things that they've acquired over decades of collecting. They have all the toys. Um, they may decide to collect specific things like particular kinds of action figures. They get all of them. That's hundreds of dollars, sometimes thousands of dollars of investment for each little thing that they want to collect. And before you know it, you're up over 50 grand, 100 grand for your Star Wars collection. And that's a very, very, very valuable fan. What am I really getting to here? What's my point? Is that these fans on some level I think are being isolated. Why have I spent time talking about Star Wars toys? Why did channels like World, uh, World Class Bullshitters spend so much time talking about Star Wars, tale, Star Wars toys that aren't selling? And that's because the toys are out here on the long tail, right? Um, toys are way out here. Um, whereas like games maybe further in here, you know, um, you have Blu-rays are kind of on the slope, right? But if you're not selling toys, then that means those long tail fans, the fans who spend $1,000 a year on, on Star Wars, aren't spending $1,000 a year on Star Wars. Um, you're losing a large amount of the value that you have in your franchise. Um, if you're not selling the merchandise, then um, wherever you divide this in half, it's it might be here, right? And for Star Wars, it might be further down here. Um, for where you, you know, this, this total amount of distribution equals this total amount of distribution. And the more you lose on the long tail, and the further this division goes up the slope, 
um, from where you're at, the more money essentially you're losing. And I think Disney actually understood, you know, whoever was purchasing Lucasfilm understood the value of Star Wars in this long tail environment. And I think it actually fit Disney's overall business plan pretty well. And you can see the way that they've exploited it. So when they bought Lucasfilm, they began heavily investing in um, in these spike these spike products in order to get more people that would hopefully end up in the long tail. Because the way the long tail works, whether you're looking at large numbers of products or you're looking at small numbers of products, like if I if I put the um, if I put the Twilight thing back up here, um, in order for you to capture the fans that are down here on the long tail looking for that postmenopausal vampire erotica novel or whatever specific thing they're really looking for. In order for you to capture that fan and sell them a product, you have to first have this spike product that gets them interested in it. And the more they go through, the more they go through Amazon, eventually they just keep working onto the longer tail where you're selling them lots of different products that are really specific to their needs. Um, but you need this spike product to capture their attention. So with Star Wars, it's the same thing. The value of the toys doesn't exist independently of the movies at all. They're highly tied to the movies. So if the toys are not selling, that means you're losing the long tail fans and it's because the movies, the toys are related to the movies. Um, there would be no Star Wars toy value if the aesthetics of Star Wars were not what they are. And that's why you really have to look at the aesthetics of Star Wars as being of extreme value. Uh, the fact that people are spend hundreds of dollars to get an original Boba Fett toy um, Boba Fett looks cool. That's why people wanted him back in the day. It had to do with uh, his visual appeal more than him being an impactful character or anything like that. So yes, the stories of Star Wars are very important, but um, in terms of the value of the brand, it's their presentation of everything that's there. Um, it's it's cool. It's cool looking things within a good story. It's not just the story. And it's not just the cool things. Um, so when you have with like with these newer movies, you have a repetition of what's there. Um, so you don't get new stuff, which means people aren't going to want to buy new toys. They're like, I already have X-Wings. Show me something new. Like when the prequels came out, it was a bunch of new looking things. Um, or if they don't like the movies, then they're not going to want to buy the action figure of, of that character. It doesn't connect with them. They, they end up passing on it. So even if you have a long tail collector, maybe they don't drop out of the franchise, but they just move further up to the slope. Um, if they stop spending $1,000 a year on Star Wars and start spending like $100 a year on Star Wars, that's still a major loss. You're converting a super valuable fan into somebody that's on the slope and just isn't going to provide you enough value. So when, whenever you see me or any of these other channels talking about toys, it's because we know that toys exist on the long tail and anything on the long tail is hyper dependent on what's on the, the beginning of the curve. Uh, what, whatever's the most popular part of the distribution. You catch them in the big part and you guide them along on the tail until you get them um, buying lots of different things, whether it's, you know, like, you know, Lego Star Wars stuff. Like here's a, you know, here's a Lego figure of me, of course, um, as Qui-Gon. Uh, or, it's, or it's something else of, um, of even uh, greater value than that. Selling lots of toys to people is what ends up making the value of the franchise. Or you can think of it like this, and I think Disney knows this. They expanded toys. They kept trying to sell toys. They were making, having Hasbro make toys as if they were going to recapture what happened with the prequels in terms of toy sales or what happened with Return of the Jedi in terms of toy sales, and then they didn't materialize. They dropped like 50% from Force Awakens to the year that follows, which lets you know that people just weren't that interested in them. Kids aren't that interested in them, but definitely um, the parents weren't really willing to buy the toys because they liked them or anything like that either. Um, it's a pretty important uh, shift over. So the more that you shift this over and get rid of that, that long tail, the more you're eliminating the value. Um, other things Disney has done with the brand to capitalize on its value is adding that brand into things like Disneyland. In Disneyland, they're building a whole Star Wars area. So there's like Tomorrowland, there's Frontierland. If you've never been to Disneyland, there's these little themed areas. So Tomorrowland has... The original Star Wars ride, Star Tours, which you actually can't ride the original one. They replaced it with this completely sickening experience of um, of random event, literally random events that happen with 3D glasses on that make you feel like you want to throw up. I'll talk about that in some other video, but um, you know, Tomorrowland was where the original Star Wars ride is. They're going to build a a whole Star Wars land. It's going to look like a Star Wars town. Now, if you can build that then you might have star wars fans who are like i gotta go to disneyland and step into star wars i gotta see this star wars land 
So they go and take their family of four. They take them for three days. Each of those three days, each ticket costs an average of like $300 for those three days. And now you're looking at $1,200 in ticket sales, plus the hotels, plus all the food. You're looking at $2,000, $3,000, possibly $4,000 from one fan to go see one little area of Disneyland. Um, because the value of Disneyland uh, has been added to by having that Star Wars land. So I think the people who bought Lucasfilm understood this entire messy graph that I that I have going on here. I think they understood that there's a long tail and that way out here as this thing continues on to infinity, you get people that are able to able and willing to spend increasingly large amounts of money um, on the franchise, and it's all based on this. Now where they're screwing up is over here on on the on the spike, uh, right? And not so much on the slope. Now, they are screwing up on the slope. Like, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was um, pretty much a panned game. It came out buggy and, and had the loot box issue and all that kind of stuff going on. So so you're losing people on the slope. And then as you get to toys, the toys are not super high quality like they used to be. So all the way through here, you're losing people. You have a bad movie, bad games. The Blu-rays aren't as good, maybe. And then you get to toys, and the toys aren't as good. And before you know it, you've really harmed the total value of the franchise. So when somebody looks at Last Jedi and they're like, this had this huge opening weekend, um, and they don't look at the drop-off from week one to week two, and they don't look at the bad toy sales. It's like you're not seeing the entire picture of the value of Star Wars. The value of Star Wars is not just in the spike. It's in the tail. And if you're cutting the tail off, you're going to be losing a huge amount of the value. And I don't know how long it's going to take for corporate to see that their investment is not being managed properly um, at, at Lucasfilm, uh, but it's it's going to have to happen sooner or later. Uh, that there has And there really has to be a change right here. If they're making bad movies, then you're never going to sell the, the toys that go with it. But if you make the movie and it's highly appealing, then all of a sudden this entire curve gets fatter and goes, um, you know, just goes further and further uh to the to the side here it gets fatter and fatter um so the tail gets more and more valuable as you as you go so that's kind of what i wanted to talk about today that's the idea of the long tail is this distribution of sales sales are not distrib uh, not distributed evenly not all people who watch star wars spend the same amount of money and in fact it's highly variable and if you lose one fan that spends a lot of money per year on star wars you, the total value of your franchise may be de decreasing dramatically. You may be losing a lot of money on it that you didn't quite anticipate. If somebody gets so turned off by Star Wars that they don't care about going to Disneyland and spending all that money to step into the franchise that they love and see it like a physical representation of it, then you've really miscalculated how you're going to manage the value of uh, the intellectual property that you bought. So. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see in here in the future. Um, this is an interesting little video. People have been asking me to talk more about marketing and this kind of stuff, and, and especially with Star Wars. And I think it's an interesting way to look at it. Um, so people who are thinking, oh, toy sales are irrelevant or something like that, they're really not. Game sales are irrelevant as well because it has to do with the total value of the franchise. So I'll see you guys next time, and have a good one.